Guntag. It's Rich from Hughes and Kettner at the Hughes and Kettner showroom in St. Wendel, Germany. Today, we've been joined by Armin from the Hello. folk rock band Fiolka. Armin is a pretty local guitarist to us, but it's actually pretty interesting what he's come to show us today because he is playing his Grandmeister 36 through a rack system. Um, we get a lot of questions on the blog of Tone and on our social media channels about how our amps would work in a rack setting. A lot of you guys are quite interested in it, and you're also interested in the older kit that we do. And so Armin has come in today to show us how the Grandmeister 36 works for him in a rack context. So just, well, thanks for coming in, and just tell us a bit about the rack that you've got. Well, uh, thanks for uh, the invite. And actually, um, I was playing rack systems for the last 10 years, but uh, things changed, and I wanted to uh, re-come to play uh, a real amplifier. But in a rack system, I had a lot of these really big, big amplifiers, and um, to to find a rack where they actually fit is really expensive. And um, so, so I thought to myself, why not try out a, for me, more likely local company, but because you're really not far away from my place. And um, then I found this Grandmaster 36, and uh, I was using... Before I got up to this, I was using um, only my uh, fractal audio system for uh, preamp and uh, and amplifying sections. So I was doing all this about the modeler. Um, I was trying to uh, recopy my sounds I had only in my fractal unit to the to the Grandmaster 36, so they can work together. In this, has called. Uh, for a cable method, yeah, yeah, so that actually the Grandmeister is in the X effects uh, effects loop. That means so I can post, uh, I can put effects in front and uh, in front of the preamp section and after the power amp section. Yeah. Okay, so what we've got in here is the fractal under there. Then we've got the Grandmeister, and up here we've got your Line 6. What is this, your, your wireless unit? This is a wireless system, yes. Okay, so for a rack system, this is actually fairly simple compared to some of the 80s kind of crazy racks that we've seen. That, that's true, yeah. yeah. It's, even it's quite heavy. It's not a, uh, how's it called, a refrigerator rack. <laughs> no, that yeah, is yeah. about my size. Yeah, yeah. So you're... A fairly young guy, I would say, probably in your 20s. Still, how come you're actually interested in the rack system? It's something that was huge in the 80s, but for the last 10, 20 years or whatever, they've kind of fallen behind kind of more standard amp setups. Um, well, this is quite simple. My, uh, my band, Fiolka, is from Nuremberg, which is 450 kilometers from my place. So I travel a lot, and we're doing a lot of shows where we travel quite uh, big distances. It's like uh, Friday in Berlin, Saturday in Munich. So uh, it's quite, it's more and more simple for me to just uh, put off the doors and plug two cables and then everything works. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, then to pack all cables in my backpack and uh, rewire it every time. So I came across the rack systems to, uh, yeah, they work pretty fine for me. Okay, cool. Oh, that's awesome. If it works for you, it works for you. But one question that I would have at this point relates to the heat of the Grandmeister. All you guys out there who have Grandmeisters or Tube Meisters and have tried them know that they get pretty hot. Um, the Grandmeister does go up to kind of 60-odd degrees, I think, if you're using it for a gig or whatever. Have you ever had issues with kind of heat in the system, or what do you do to, to keep it ventilated? Well... I didn't have any problems. At, when I first had this at my place, I, I, uh, was, um, I was trying out the DI box inside the red box, you call the it. The red box, yeah. And uh, after that, I, after like an hour, I put my phone on top of the amp, and I was like, oh, whoa, this is getting really hot. But uh, there I, don't, I do not have uh, had any issues. Um, I was trying, the first way I tried it, I was putting the fractal above. Yeah. But then I was a bit worried about the heat, and I said, okay, I'll put that, uh, perhaps best put it underneath. And um, for, heating, um, for heating issues, I just make a simple um, one-finger spot there mm -hmm. and a one-finger spot above. Yep. And this works actually quite fine. I didn't have any issues. At least the wireless system didn't break down during, uh, because of the heat. Yeah. Now that's cool, and I think that would be the important point. If you just leave a little bit of space 
between the amp, if you've got a Hughes and Kettner amp and you want to put it into a rack, just leave maybe one rack unit or, as Armin said, just a sort of a finger width of space, then you're probably going to be okay. But if you're not sure what you're doing with rack stuff, then always go to a qualified tech or your local music store and just ask them about it, get them to do some testing for you and make sure it's okay. All right, then let's move on and actually talk about some of the sounds that you're getting out of this system. With the fractal unit there and with the Grandmeister, you've got, what, literally hundreds of sounds you could use. That's so true, yeah. Tell us about some of the ones that you use with Fiolka. Um, well, with Fiolka, I'm actually doing... I'm the only guitar, and I'm more like a... How's it called? A carpet instrument, if you want to call it like mm -hmm. this. Like, really behind. Because as in folk rock music... Um, most likely everything is dependent on the flutes and the hurdy-gurdies and the stuff. <laughs> yeah. So um, actually I just keep uh, simple, overdriven, um, sexy rock tones. Mm -hmm. So uh, using, I'm, I'm, all, I'm only using, um, how to call it, low output guitars. Yeah. And so even with the ultra channel, it's not quite that rocky as mm. I would like to have it. So with the fractal, I just put some uh, boost pedal in front to uh, boost the sound a little up and uh, yeah, perhaps some delay or reverbs behind to mm -hmm. make it sound huge. Yeah. So your standard tone in the band context would be this guitar here, which is rocking uh, passive Seymour Duncan pickups, the Grandmeister on the Ultra Channel, and then just a bit of grit with a, with a stomp box or with something out of your, your ground control yes. pedal. Yeah. Actually, that's it, yeah. Okay. It's pretty simple. Should we hear some of the sounds? Uh, yes, of course. Let's, Let's do see. It. This is my basic Fjolka rhythm tone. <laughs> And when it comes up to uh, lead stuff, I basically take the same tone and put just some reverb and a um, little bit of delay in it. This would switch. <laughs> Huh. Here it's a quite short delay, yeah. which repeats only one time, I think. Yeah. Just to fatten up the sound a little bit, yeah, stand to out get more a bit in the more mix. Yeah. Uh, fatter, yes. Yeah. Just on the folk rock kind of idea, you've got, like you said, flutes and hurdy-gurdies and all sorts of different stuff. Do you ever have any issues kind of letting your guitar kind of come through the mix? Um, this is basically the problem of our mixing guy. <laughs> But um, actually not, because all the bottom end is only there for me. Yeah. And all the other instruments are just like whirling around in the uh, high mids and, uh, and in the top end. Yeah. So I can, I can actually keep it really fat and really low, you know, like with, with balls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can say it like this. But Hughes and Kettner, we can say anything. <laughs> What tuning are you in on the guitar? Are you a whole step down and drop? Um, I'm, I'm using, uh, I was using standard tuning for mm. a long, long time. But then I had to bring other guitars to the concert, or more than two guitars, um, because we had two songs where you had to use D, or, yeah, where I had to use in the, the D or the drop D. Mm -hmm. So I changed now, I changed my, my playing a bit, and now I can go with drop D everywhere. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, that's a pretty standard setup then, but it sounds really, really fat through this system here. So tell us, for other people who might be interested in getting started with kind of a rack in 2016, they don't really know what they're doing, they might have an amp of this size or they mm. might not, where would you start if you were going to advise somebody on their first purchase? On their first rack purchase, you yeah. say? Yeah. This is This is quite a... A tough question, I think. Um, you see a lot of uh, a lot of modeling systems to put or effect rack units like uh, the uh, Line Six HD Pod, yep. I think it's called, or um, the uh, uh, Eleven Rack from Avid, mm -hmm. the, the orange box. Um, those work pretty well, even with amplifiers. I tested uh, the Eleven Rack also because I was using it as my backup sound card at home. And it works really well, uh, even with the Grandmeister 36. But if you want to keep it simple, 
get an amp with an uh, with a serious effects loop and some modeling effect rack. Yeah. So some basic modeler where you have you don't need to have like um, pretty common is also the the G major G major two oh, yeah, from the TC. TC electronic. Yep. Yep. This works really well as mm. well. One of my friends is using this with a uh, tube meister, and um, it works really well too. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then tell us a little bit about your setup when it comes to creating MIDI presets. You've got a huge number of options here with this board. How, how do you do it? How do you control all the different sounds that you need for a gig? Well, I'm using, in fact, for one gig, I'm using eight or nine presets. Um, I control these when uh, this is now the Voodoo Lab Ground Control mm -hmm. Pro MIDI board, so it's actually kind of big and expensive yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, but you can control, control them with any any MIDI board, actually. You just go from the board MIDI out to the... I go now first to the XFX MIDI in, mm -hmm. and uh, the MIDI through of the XFX goes into the Grandmeister. So the XFX is actually listening to MIDI channel 1, and this to MIDI channel 2, meaning um, that if I press one button, for example, now I'm ch I change back to rhythm, it changes to another preset here and to another preset here. Yep. I even have um, on the board some instant access switches where I can basically just turn on reverb or turn it off as I, if, if I feel like I have to during the preset. Yeah, yeah. And um, how long did it take you to get used to creating this kind of MIDI patch? I know a lot of guys who read our blog of tone and who ask us questions you sometimes have issues with MIDI, and for a lot of players, it's kind of a, a scary concept. Something like the TubeMeister, you've got, you know, you've three channels, you can add a couple of stomp boxes in front, and that's, that's good for your sound. But if you have a complex setup with lots of different effects, MIDI is possibly, <coughs> probably even, the way to go. But for you, was it a scary process when you started with MIDI? Did it take a long time to, to get into it? Um. You have to be clear at, at first, before you start, what you actually want to do. So um, you have to say, okay, I want to make a clean tone with this and this and this. So you prepare your preset on your modeling unit or on your effects unit. And um, then you go on to, to, up to the, to, the, to the real amp and tweak your sound just as you wish it. And then it was actually pretty simple. You press, you hit store. And you press it on the on the footboard then, mm -hmm. where you want to store it, or on, on which preset, and it actually works. Yeah, I didn't have really, I didn't have any problems with it actually. Mm. Um, when I was first getting into it, so I was like, okay, you have sixteen channels, so actually I control sixteen different um, machines with it, but. Well, to be honest, who has 16 different machines to control? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so for me to, to make, uh, to recreate my sounds for my band, it took me two days, I mm -hmm, think. Mm -hmm. because of course, when you get some new stuff, you're trying out everything. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that was basically it. Cool. So I guess what that says is you should be brave. If you want to try MIDI and you haven't yet, just, just give it a go because it's really not as complicated as it might seem. And while Armin's board is a pretty big one, you can try something like the Hughes & Kettner FSM foot switch, which is a lot kind of more simple in its layout, but pretty much does exactly the same as yes. what the Voodoo Lab product does as well, doesn't it? Have you ever used the Hughes & Kettner board? Um, I wanted to, but uh, apparently those guys didn't send it with because you have to buy it apart. And um, I was thinking of, yeah, perhaps I might get one. But then I said, okay, I have this one already, so I don't need to spend uh, something to buy it, uh, in addition to something I have that actually works. Sure, yeah. No, there are plenty of good third-party controllers available. If you go for the Hughes & Kettner Triumph Mark III, you get the TSM MIDI board with it, which is... A special one conceived just for, just the, for the Triumph Mark III, okay. yeah. But yeah, if you go for a Tube Meister or a Grand Meister and you want to go for MIDI, then yes, the FSM pedal is an optional accessory. Okay, well, awesome. Let's just finish this off by 
you telling us a bit about your band? Where can people go if they want to find out a little bit more and hear some of your songs? Um, well, we're with uh, we released our new album and our first album actually in September 2015, and uh, of course we're everywhere where people nowadays look for music. So YouTube or um, what's it called iTunes, Spotify, Amazon. Um, you can find us actually anywhere mm. in those new generation media platforms uh -huh. and even in some city shops uh, that's cool someone was telling me he f or sent me a picture of our album in some CD shop but I didn't see uh, I didn't see anyone uh, any anyone yes yep. anyone by myself so far mm -hmm. but uh, because I don't need to pay for it if I want to have a copy <laughs> But everybody else should. Don't steal music, kids. <laughs> It's not good. Well, there you go. This is Rich from Hughes and Kettner. This is Armin. We're signing off from the Hughes and Kettner Lounge for today. Check us out on HughesandKettner.com and check our YouTube channel for way more. Read the blog of Tone if you want to learn a bit more about MIDI. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. One last question. Yo. In the style of Inspector Colombo, you know the series? Yes. Um, was that the question? The last question. This is do you know a spectacle number? Yeah, I do. Okay, <laughs> finish. Yeah. Uh, for the manufacturers, how had you built in the, the GM36 in the rack system? Ah, yeah, that's a good question. In English. Uh, I'll ask uh, it. Yes. Yeah? <laughs> you want me to? Ah, uh, you first. Shall you I just ask? ask? Yeah. Okay. How did you build the GM36 into the rack system? Well, I was searching my ass off for some um, some common uh, common solution to put it into a rack, but this simply doesn't exist, which is actually pretty weird because you have you built an amp in a in a rack format or in of a rack size. Of the size, yeah, yeah. And um, well, some guy from a lo lo as you said before, uh, I was asking the local music shop. And some guy from that local music shop told me, okay, why don't you get some, um, just some rack unit, which is actually empty. So it's just a bottom plate of metal with, the, with those um, rack ears, we call it in German. Okay. And uh, then you turn, off, uh, you turn off the feet from the, the, the plastic feet from the amplifier. Mm -hmm. And then I... Just screwed them into those uh, into this metal plate there. Okay. So it's actually also possible if you should need to to pretty easily get the amp out again as yes. well. Yes. Yes. I release those four screws. Well, I unplug everything mm -hmm. first, of course. Then you can take it out and another four screws, and you have the uh, the top um, lonely in your hands without that rack system. Yeah. Yeah. But you should really get onto and build those, uh, build this stuff that come with the amp actually to make it fit. We should. Well, uh, we get a lot of questions, like I've already said, from people on Facebook saying, uh, "We love the old stuff you've done, like the cream machine, and we'd love it if you built more rack stuff." So maybe we should. So you know, write to us if you really want us to build more rack stuff, and if enough of you guys ask, we may consider doing it in the next few years. Mm -hmm.